another possibility with XDC in the equation that can fix Ethereum? Is that what I'm hearing you say? No. So actually, thank you for bringing that up. We're not fixing Ethereum, guys. Ethereum, Bitcoin, all those Kazari ones, they're crashing. So the question is, how does it tie into Stellar and XRP and all, you know, all, all the good coins, right? Well, mm -hmm. the solution is when that stuff crashes, think about it this way. You're playing the stock market game. You put in, you know, a thousand bucks and then your stock craps to zero. Who gets that money, right? It's not you. It's not me. It's, you know, the brokerage firm or whoever, whoever's in charge of that. Well, in this game, people have been dumping trillions of dollars into Ethereum and Bitcoin, all those guys. So when those markets crash, where does the money go? Well, in this case, the money's no longer going to, you know, whoever those token devs are, or those, whoever those exchanges are. That's right. So how do you actually transfer oh, that wealth? We're giving, the, we're giving the power back to you, the people. We're giving yes. the power back to you, the people, yes. right? Okay, yes. we got Okay, okay, got you. Yeah, so... So let me, let me kind of add to that because I know, you know, some of the people who listen to us, they've done the same research that we have, right? They follow Q, they know what's going on, and, and they're very familiar with white hats versus black hats. But of course, we're going to have some new people going, well, how do you know? How do you know? That sounds very tinfoiler of you. So let me give you some non-tinfoiler facts to think about, okay? Ethereum, as you mentioned before, they've been around for a very long time. They've been talking about an Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. Well, what's really, really interesting, Mel, is last year on December 8th, Ethereum was supposed to have their 2.0 upgrade. And what is this upgrade supposed to do? Two massive things. The first thing is you can no longer mint new Ethereum coins. The second thing is you can't mint any of those little baby tokens on the Ethereum network, right? So they're essentially saying, we're cutting you off, no more Ethereum. Well, the same day, December 8th, something else happened. Mm -hmm. And that something else is Stellar went into a congressional hearing. And literally, this is the name of the topic, digital assets and the future of finance, understanding the challenges and benefits of financial innovation in the United States. So boom, Stellar goes to Congress and Ethereum's like, ah, crap. So they actually delayed. Well, let's see, I'm trying to think when they, when they announced, um, I think it was like, end of February, something like that. I can't remember exactly. They announced, Ethereum announced that they had to delay that December 8th um, upgrade date. And what do you know? They're delaying it to June of this year. And so the reason why I'm just cracking up right now is because this upgrade not only says, okay, you know, we're going to, we're going to shut off all their mining and not allow minting of new Ethereum network assets, but they're going to upgrade their speed. And guess what they're going to upgrade their speed process to? It is, let me get my numbers right, 100,000 transactions per second. Massive boost starting in June. Well, you know what already happened, though? Mel, last year in November, there was something called SpeedX that came out for Stellar. And SpeedX took Stellar from a couple thousand directly to a uh, uh, hundred thousand transactions per second. So Stellar already has that speed. Ethereum hasn't even got there. They haven't even started their upgrade yet. And by the time Stellar and XRP and all the other ISO coins become official because of ISO 2022 regulation, Ethereum is going to have no job left because we don't need something that we've already been doing for. So Ethereum is months. essentially going to go out of business. Yes. I mean, it is slow. It is incredibly expensive. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, Mel, but there's a guy named um, Mike Stephon Drop. Huber. Mike there's Drop. a guy named Stephon Huber on Twitter, right? And this guy is like brainiac lawyer of, of all time. And he's got some great posts on Ethereum, but there's one in particular that I'd have to go and find and send to you if, if you don't have it already. But it talks about all the different transactions and the, the basically the price tags of how much you're paying for fees versus how much you're actually sending or buying, right? Like the transaction volume of it. And lo and behold, the most expensive one in the whole world is Ethereum. So collectively, people pay more for Ethereum gas fees than they do actually buying or trading Ethereum. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. So these you're, really you're, you're preaching to the choir. You're preaching. My brother, I tell the story. My brother bought a token called Let's Go Brandon. 
and he paid $180 to buy $170 worth of Let's Go Brandon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I have so many people all day long on my channel. And they're like, hey, you know, we, we want to bring in our, our Bitcoin, our Ethereum into Lobster. How do we do it? And all of a sudden they go and check. They're like, whoa, you know, it's going to cost me like $50, $60 to send it over here. But I only have like, you know, $10, $15 worth of it. So I'm going out of pocket just to pay to send it. That's not even worth it for me at this point. So, yeah. So, Bitcoin okay, let's get into a little bit of cryptocurrency, which I like to really call digital assets. Crypto means you're dead because that's what the elite want for us. They want us in a crypt. I don't want to be in a crypt. I want to be on a yacht, you know, a mega yeah. yacht <laughs> with mega a flying yacht. saucer that goes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this war that's going on in the Ukraine,